there! This is episode 5 of our Fighter walkthrough for Baldur's Gate. We're going to explore Nashkel and the surrounding area. With your hurried flight from Candlekeep barely behind you, the troubles facing the Sword Coast seem an unfamiliar blur to your fractured nerves. Gorion would not have you sit idle, however, and perhaps investigating local concerns will shed some light on your own predicament. How the iron shortage or the trouble in the Nashkill mines could possibly be linked to you, you have no idea. So we've arrived, and not a problem. just like the other cities, we're going to open up the map, and we cross this bridge immediately to start chatting with people. I think... Um, Stand away, guard citizen. Comes here and he's going to ask us who we are. We're going to say who we are, and we're going to say we're here to help. And he will also tell us about kind of the issues that are going on, right? He talks to us about the iron basically being all corrupted, uh, which, of course, is impacting the town. But then he also talks about the commander Brage, right? Brage was a, uh, was a commander. He killed his family in a rage and now the poor man is well he's heartbroken over it for the glory of this is the town mayor Baron Gaskill he recognizes Jahira and he asks if we are here to help and he's happy to help us with anything that we need so we can ask him what exactly is the trouble and he will tell us that we're basically in the middle of the uh, iron crisis right the um, the ore that's coming out is crumbling it basically is rotten and he's asking for our help we'll say what we'll do what we can jahira backs us up and uh is happy to and we're happy to take anything that we can get for he Ooh, you have returned like talking to ublik so here soon. ublik is a kind of a he's like a bondsman and he thinks that we're a guy named gray wolf so we're not going to dissuade him from that and we're going to get 200 gold I don't see any problem with that. I don't, I don't see any issues. We're going to walk by the barracks, walk by a guy named Minsk, and keep going. We're also going to cross over the bridge again and walk by a guy, again, named, you disturb me. A guy named Edwin, and walk right past him to talk hey, yeah. to this guy, Nuber. Now, Nuber will keep on talking to us. He will talk and talk hey, and yeah. talk. So... Uh, if we talk to him, I think, like 20 or 30 times hey, yeah. or so, he'll give us a little bit of experience. So, while that's going on, uh, Nashkel hey, yeah. has quite a few things going on with it. Hey, yeah. It has a carnival hey, yeah. that will be to the east of the city, hey, yeah. or east of the town. Hey, yeah. And we're going to hey, yeah. go there hey, yeah. after we rest a little bit. There is going to be another assassin hey, yeah. we're going to run into hey, yeah. uh, hey, in yeah. the inn. Hey, yeah. hey, yeah. uh, we are hey, yeah. going to hey, yeah. Hey, yeah. also... Hey, yeah. have, hey, uh, yeah. There's a little cache hey, yeah. that we're about to go hey, to yeah. to get some hey, really, yeah. really nice hey, armor for free. Hey, yeah. hey, we're going to yeah. talk to some of the citizens hey, to yeah. learn not only about what's going on here, but also what's going on uh, in the country of Om. That's something to note, is that Nashkel is in the country of Om. So this is related to the politics of the area, because Baldur's Gate and the other cities of the area are in one country, and... Um, and Om is in a whole other country. For example, Carp is going to talk to us here about her What's life as a tale? farmer. And we basically say, okay, well, yeah, life's tough as a farmer, but, you know, I don't think it's that bad. And she talks about uh, other areas and city life in Om. And one city she points to is Athkapa, which happens to be more foreshadowing than Lord Foreshadow. Kind of, kind of interesting. She's not going to be the last person to foreshadow stuff uh, in the city of Nashkel or in the town of Nashkel. Walk past the general store since we don't need anything, and it's time for us to face our sixth assassin. I will show you just now, the sixth assassin is a cleric. Stop touching so, me. we're gonna have one person go in and. Maybe a touch unladylike. But I'm gonna slit your throat, I am. And she is going to basically say that she is right there to take us out. Now we can be stoic and say, well, attack us as you will. Or we can ask her why she's doing this. 
Well, I'm also kind of thinking the way Zara would go. And Zara, I feel like, would try to appeal to her better senses, and she doesn't want any of it. So, we're going to do Life Drain on her. Life Drain is a nice spell that just lets us um, do a quick interrupt of her spell abilities. We're going to do it again. It doesn't do that much damage at Hardly level 1, my time. but it... Um, but it's a nice little piece. In fact, it doesn't do much damage, period. But now we're going to go in again. And this time we're going to use Magic Missile from our Wand of Missiles. Again, any time that we kind of interrupt her, we get a good chance of of interrupting her spells. So we're going to get I out of here. Will be done. And we're going to send everybody in to beat her up for lunch money. Your voice is Ambrosia. Stop touching me! Nature's servant awaits. It's a pretty easy fight ready. once she has used all of her spells. Just gotta keep in mind that she does cast some nasty crowd control spells. Please. And M1 asks about it, and we say this is our sixth assassin. We had two at Candlekeep, one at the Friendly Arm Inn, one at the Red Sheaf in Barakost. And um, and one shortly after leaving Candlekeep. So, this is number six. We tried to tell her, but, well, she was a little busy with the joys of adventuring. And so, uh, otherwise, the, city, the town of Nashkel is actually relatively peaceful, as long as you don't start fights. I remember back in the day, the first time I was here, I... Um, I went into the barracks and I tried to we steal had stuff from the chest. No, sorry. And that was a bad idea because they all kind of tried to kill me. And they are actually pretty deadly with bows and arrows. So, not a good idea. At this point, let's go on to the carnival. Now, the carnival, oddly enough, oh, is one of the more dangerous spots in Ashkel. One person I want to point out is Quail. Quail normally is right above... Um, right above the Friendly Arm Inn at a spot that crosses into Baldur's Gate. You normally can't access him until Chapter 5, but I had a mod that moved him uh, along with other companions. He is a gnome illusionist, and we're going to walk right past him because we don't My need him right shall now. Not speak to such as thee. Come see me, and this is a performer nine. performing a poem about the Nosferatu, which, guess what? <laughs> That's more foreshadowing for Baldur's Gate 2. It will be done. And we're going to talk about talk I'm to the Great Gazeba. He is a summoner. And he is going to summon the amazing Opa, yes, the exploding ogre. Done. Oh my gosh, so much fun. So much fun. I'm always Do it again. Ready to Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> do it again, do it again, do it again. I'm always ready oh. to entertain. Oh. Oh no. We hmm? we made a mistake. Now we have to kill the ogre. Your voice. I could do no what bonus points by making him explode again. What you want? Can I do I've it? Done had enough of this. No. I just killed yes? him. Yes? It will be done. I want my money back. Where's the zip? I want my you money back. need a you're new tailor. Your clothes are absolutely dreadful. Well, you're not Gazeb, Binky. Who are you? Oh no, you're speaking German now. I know a proof for that. Yeah, I think I should scare you. Get out of here, rotten Germans. I'm kidding. I like the Germans. Well, most of them. Glad anyway. to meet you, friend. This guy actually is useful. He actually tells us a little bit about what's going on from kind of a, a commoner's perspective. Uh, he talks about how lots of people are dead or in the mines because they're working. And they uh, really, there are two options, either going down in the mines or trying to or trying to serve the guard. And since he can't serve in the guard, he has to go down in the mines. And lots of disappearances happen down in the mines. So... People gotta be dang careful if they go down there. This guy's gonna try to uh, sell some snake oil. We're not gonna pay for that because, well, we know better. 50 coin for a magic potion that gives us great powers of intellect? I don't think so. 
Who's this? What's going here? Leave us alone, will you? This is Zordal, and he's threatening to kill this woman because she is a witch. That's right. In the world of magic and world of sorcery, he's threatening to kill a woman because she's a witch. And he's threatening to do it with a magic word. We can't actually choose an option here that will automatically have him say the word and she dies. But we're going to just kill the mage. Oh, hi. And we're going to have him be attacked by bats and by our party members. Pretty simple stuff. Yes. He can be kind of dangerous. He will uh, cast spells at your, your spellcasters. So it's a good, good idea to just ha incapacitate him. But in return, we get a mage robe for Zar that we'll identify right away. This is good against slashing attacks and improves our saves. This is color spray. It will put opponents to sleep, but something troubling you. Um, sleep is a better None spell. Better. I stand. It will be done. Yes, friend. And uh, and she will basically say uh, that she is technically a witch because she casts spells, but she's not out to do any of the nasty things that Salem uh, that will hurt hurt Salem and put her on trial for the witch master from the witch master general. We can respond different ways. If we say that we're not interested in any reward, she'll give us a potion of heroism because we're true heroes. This is a nice potion to have. Helps for going through combat. Or you could sell it. Only warriors can use it, though. This is Zeke. And Zeke is offering for 500 gold to give us a scroll to unpetrify a woman. Yeah. Good guy. Actually, it's funny if you cast um, like Detect Alignment, which is usually a pretty terrible spell. But if you cast it, then uh, he'll be detected as being evil. So that kind of makes sense. So anyway, um, the nice thing is, is with the NPC Interactions mod, uh, Jahir will automatically get the scroll. I stand ready. And yes, as you direct. And we can cast it to uh, break her free. Hmm? This is Bronwyn. It will be done. Bronwyn is a cleric. True neutral cleric. By the ice breath of and all, it is good to see new faces and taste freedom again. She's not bad, but there are better clerics out there. And since we already have a full party, we don't really need her at the current moment. But again, she's not bad. If you need a cleric, she's pretty decent. You will have to heal her right away because she only has one HP. Let's go in here. Not a problem, oh. my friend. Oh, drugs. Oh, I mean, um, drugs are bad, kids. Don't don't do drugs. Stay clean. Stay clean. Don't do the Black Lotus. Don't Not do the a Black problem. Lotus. All right. So there's more that we can explore with the carnival. There are little tents that act as shops, but let's head back into town. With ease. And we're going to go ahead ease. and take a rest at the inn. And when we rest at the inn, what we're going to do with is ease. we're going to actually have a dream. You do not dream often. But tonight the visions are vivid indeed. Long have you walked, but now you find yourself back amidst the stones of Candlekeep. Your former home looms before you, but the gate is closed and barred. Over the walls there is a candle in your old room, but as the light goes out, the brick surrounding the window closes together. The very walls conspire to keep you at bay. A familiar voice startles you, though it is calm and caring. You cannot go back this way, child. You must go on. Gorion forms before you. And though his image should be comforting, it seems but a shade of his living self. He is dead in your dreams, as in life. The phantom of your foster father gestures toward the blackness of the wood, as though it should be inviting. Perhaps it is, in a way, but the traveling will be hard. As you think this, a smooth and obvious path becomes clear out of the corner of your eye. It seems meant for you, pulls at your very being, and promises to quickly lead you away from the life you once led. Perhaps this would be for the best, but it is a bit too convenient for your liking. You do not wish to dwell upon the loss you have endured, but neither should it be forgotten. Gorion smiles and fades away. The pull becomes a push, but you turn away, 
steadfast in your new direction. The way is not quite as clear, but it is sure to be interesting nonetheless. A whisper follows as you stride away, something vestigial and sinister that you recognize, but yet have never heard. You will learn. You don't look back. So now we're going to have a bunch of our party members ask us about the dream. The big important thing about the dream is, and you know, you can feel free to slow this down and read it for yourself. Um, but the big important thing about these dreams is they happen once every chapter and it is, it actually gives you an ability that is, uh, connected to your reputation. If your character is like Atian and have a positive or good reputation or anything above 10, uh, I think it's actually 10 or above, then you get a either healing spell or a uh, buff spell of some kind, right? For example, now I'm going to get uh, Heal Light Wounds, which is a nice little additional healing for uh, a low-level party like ours. Uh, if you have a reputation of under 10, then you will get a spell that is an attack spell, right? So uh, uh, Line Arc's Minor Train is certainly one that comes at, at the early levels. Then you get some pretty gnarly and actually kind of decent spells later on. Uh, they come up as special abilities, and they happen after the dream. And the dream actually changes a little bit with your reputation. So um, with this, after M1 speaks, we're going to go and head mm -hmm. out to the mines. Not a problem. Now it in the mines, there's one additional little um, nook where you can pick up a Wand of Frost. Frost is kind of risky because it can do a lot of damage, and there's not that many enemies that can resist it. But it can cause the items on an opponent to basically shatter. So, including magic weapons or any other trinkets that you might want to get. So you have to be careful. So I think it's high time that we head into the mine. Stand mines. away, citizen! And so this guy says we should talk to Emerson I stand ready. first. It will be done. Emerson will give us one day to actually explore so the mine. So you want to take a look at me And with mine, that, we're going to get ready to head on down. Uh, I will see you all next time where we will explore the mines. Until then, take care and good luck. We're all counting on you. Stand away, citizen! Hmm?